guys, welcome back. Today I am here to talk about my least favorite book that I've read so far in 2019. That is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I know that this is a very beloved book by some people and honestly I went into it expecting to, it to be a new favorite, to be five stars, and um, <laughs> for a variety of reasons which we will get into, by the end of it, I realized that for me this was going to be a one star read and this is only my second one star of 2019 and it's June, I don't give them out very much, but um, yeah, this book kind of made me mad for a lot of reasons and uh, we're going to talk about it. I was not expecting to do this, but I finished reading Night Film last night and I just, I need to get it out guys, so um, settle in. <laughs> we're going to talk about Night Film. I will do my best to stay largely spoiler free, but it is entirely possible that some of these could be mildly spoilery, so if you don't want to know anything about this book, maybe it's not the video for you, but um, I, I'll do my best not to do any major spoilers. So Night Film is an adult thriller that centers on the director of these sort of underground cult horror classics, and his like 25 year old daughter has recently passed away possibly through suicide. The main character of the story is an investigative journalist who's kind of obsessed with this director, Cordova, and his films, and thinks that he does all of these evil things, and so when the daughter dies and he sees her right before her death, he decides to start investigating to see what happened and see if he can find proof that Cordova is a bad guy. Okay, first thing I want to talk about is, like, the structure. The concept is pretty cool. It is a mixed media book, so you do get like articles and pictures and stuff, which which is very cool. However, I will say this book is way too long. It's like 600 pages long for a thriller, and I don't think it was necessary. It is more of a literary thr thriller, but still, I didn't think it was necessary. I also want to say that I really, really did not like the main character. And I think he's supposed to be just sort of this like morally gray person that you maybe don't love but come to like. I, I didn't. He was a horrible person and like some of the stuff that happens near the end of the book and some of the things that are said makes me think that he's supposed to be or become this like a good man and I'm like no but you're not. You're racist and sexist and homophobic and fatphobic and like a horrible father putting your daughter in dangerous situations. It's just really really bad and um, I like I don't necessarily have a problem with unlikable or morally gray characters but this went beyond that um, and I, I think that my biggest issue with with this with what I'm about to talk about and with some other issues I have with this book was the authorial perspective on it because there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't doesn't get addressed and it makes me wonder if the author realizes that it is there. So throughout this book, throughout this entire book, any time there was a person on the page who wasn't white, thin, and well-educated and like reasonably well off, there was so much crap that was constantly being said. Like anybody who wasn't those things was a caricature of the worst assumptions that people make about those things. And it just kept getting worse and worse. Like I noticed a little bit of it in the first couple hundred pages, like it bothered me a little bit, but like after that, there was just so, so much of it. Every single person of color that you see on the page is a negative stereotype and exists for the purpose of the white male main character getting farther in his journey. It's also constant references to body sizes, whether people are thin or fat, but using really gross language surrounding that and referencing it over and over again and using it as a negative attribute, which I just have zero patience for. and. I had hoped that maybe by the end of the book there would be some sort of redemptive thing that would happen where maybe you would see that the author intends for us to realize how awful of a person this guy is. But that was not what happened. Now, the and, and part of what makes this 
even worse is that my other big issue with this was the way that he handled his relationship with his five-year-old daughter. He has an ex-wife who he's like such a jerk about, such a jerk about his ex-wife. And his five-year-old daughter, he like puts her in dangerous situations selfishly so that he can continue this investigation that he's obsessed with. By the end of the book, he does have a character arc switch in terms of recognizing that maybe he didn't do the right thing by his daughter and he needs to be a better parent. So he does grow in that, but not in anything else, which makes me think maybe the author doesn't realize just how bad the other stuff in this book is. Um, and it, it's just constant. I mean, like, guys. I posted something on Instagram as just like one little example of hundreds of examples through the book. I'll pull this up and show you. Okay, so there was one place where they're referencing a young Japanese man who works at a hotel who they think maybe won't be open to bribery. And it says, yeah, well, from the look of this guy, his price is 300 beheadings and a katana sword. Now, like a couple of offhand comments like that, I can kind of get past. I get it, like if you're trying to like build up a character, but it is constant and it is never addressed. Anytime there was a person who is poor, a person of color, a person who isn't thin is on the page, there is like this kind of shit being talked about them. And I, I just like, it was so gross so gross and I just couldn't and like assumptions being made about immigrants not speaking English and surprise when like an Asian person actually doesn't have an accent I'm like oh my god and this was written in 2013 you guys so like there's not enough of an excuse for it this was written recently enough that it should be a whole hell of a lot better than that okay so that is a big issue that I had throughout the entire book the other thing <laughs> Like even with that, I was like, well, maybe it could be like two stars or something. But the other thing is that I hate the message of the book too. I just cannot get behind it. It's this sort of book that is pushing this idea of like the creative genius who has to go to these dark places and it's okay that they indulge in dark appetites and go dark places because they're a creative genius. So like whatever their behavior is doesn't matter because it's all about their art. And the idea too is that the consumers of the art as well or the participants in the in this art um, like should go to these dark places as well. And there's like really, really dark stuff. I mean, like you wanna talk content warnings, there's hella content warnings in this book. But it's this concept, which I've seen other places and I just don't agree with and just don't like, that says that all humans, all of humanity have this darkness in them. And if you don't dive into and face that darkness and go through that darkness, you're just not brave or courageous and you're not truly living life until you've gone through these really dark places. Um, and it, and like, I just, I don't agree. I don't like it. I don't get, I'm not behind it. I'm like, no, that's not necessarily true. And you guys know, if you follow my channel, I read a lot of pretty dark books. I actually like a lot of books that have morally gray characters or portray darkness and evil. I don't have a problem with books exploring that. The problem for me is the authorial attitude towards it. It's one thing if I'm reading a book about this morally gray character and it's clear that the author is portraying it as um, perhaps even a tragedy of like, yeah, they're going these really dark places and maybe the character is really kind of glorying in the darkness that they're getting behind, but the author's perspective is clearly that this is tragic, that they're going down this dark path. And I, I'm fine with that. Like, I enjoy that. Those stories, I think, resonate because it's real. Like, there are dark places in the world and people do go down dark paths. This was not that. This felt very gratuitous. It felt like this idea that there's beauty in evil. And I just, and like, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I can't get behind it. The messaging of the book and the ending of the book feels like it thinks it's super deep, but it's really not that deep. <laughs> it's really not. It's just crap. Um, I, I, I mean, if you can't tell, I like, I really, really hated this book and I, I almost never feel that way about things. I am going to talk about like some of the, the, the positives of what was done well here, because there were certainly some things in the writing that were done well, but, um, for me, this is one star because of all of the problematic content and also just because I can't get behind the message of the book too. Like that might have been a saving grace for me a little bit, but I just hated everything about it. It was not for me. I will say 
it keep, kept me reading. I wanted to know what was going on. I wanted to know what the ending was and what was going to happen. Um, there were parts of this book that were really compelling and kept me reading, although even then it was like with some really gross stuff. I mean, there's like violence done towards children that's talked about here, so definitely know that there's that kind of content here. There's discussions of rape and uh, murder and torture and like all kinds of like real, real crazy stuff but I felt like the payoff wasn't worth it. The payoff was really unsatisfying and um, yeah, I just, and the ending is a little bit open-ended and I think it's trying to be like super literary and cool and deep and I'm like, it's not that deep. I've seen other people do the same thing um, with these open-ended endings and have much better books. <laughs> I just, I can't. Um, I, yeah, it wasn't boring. <laughs> mostly it was too long so parts of it were but like mostly it wasn't boring and there were parts of it that the actual writing craft of it was definitely done well it's very creative and the things that she comes up with are very creative and the multimedia part of it is uh cool but this was not the book for me um so yeah I feel like I'm usually much more positive in these reviews that I do and you know what if you loved this if this worked for you great like not every book is for every person for me I like I can understand why some people might really like it but I did not so that was my experience reading Night Film by Marisha Pessel I like because there were elements of it that I thought were well crafted I would try something else from her in the future, like maybe Never World Wake I've heard good things about, which is a YA thriller, but there was just too much here that um, I had issues with. Okay, so that is it. Uh, talk to me in the comments down below. It's <sighs> a lot, guys. If you're still here, talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts, and um, if you liked this book, feel free to tell me why and feel free to tell me why you disagree with me. I mean, that's fine. Like you're welcome to do that. But this was definitely my feelings on this book. So there you have it. And for your question of the day, tell me about a book that you really didn't like that a lot of other people seem to like, because I think that would be interesting to hear. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more and click that bell icon anywhere on the screen to be notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.